pray the Lord, brethren. God is good that uh, gives us this opportunity. The program Finding God. And we dive straight away into the word of prayer. And then read this word. And then think through for our own goodness. Father God, we thank you that you give us opportunity all time, opportunity every moment to share from your word, to know you more, to find you more, and so that our lives will be a life worth living. Bless us as we think through this, your word, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, it's a pleasure to meet with you, to share with you, to interact with you. It's a pleasure to think through God's word, which is our life. And I just want to remind us about what it says. Seek me and you'll find me, so says the Lord. And I just want to get into this verse very quickly, and then I will mention what we are to share tonight, this, this moment. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, the Lord himself says, you will seek me and find me. And when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have de driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Remember, brethren, our program is finding God and finding God, seeking him first, and then we find him. And this is where we derive our livelihood. And so we've been having a moment of interaction, talking about different personalities in God's word. And we have journeyed indeed. And I want to appreciate God for every moment that has given you and me to share together. And I want to appreciate you for every time tuning in to share together about this. We talked about various personalities and it has always been our desire to continue sharing about them because from them, there are lessons that we pick. They were human beings like we are and therefore we're also following in their footsteps those that did good, that pleased God, we may also be a blessing in our one way or another. But we have talked about these several personalities. We have talked about figures in the Old Testament part of the Bible. And we have talked about the prophets. The prophets that we are continuing to talk about because they were human beings. They were men that spoke God's word. And we have talked about what prophecy means what prophets means and what prophets do and what prophets did that actually they were leading God's people back to him. And so the critical word is that they acted as a link, a link between God and his people, picking a message that God is speaking, delivering to the people. And then whatever God does, he reveals it to his people, just like his word says. And so among these prophets, we have deliberately thought about them, talked about them, what they did. We talked about the writing prophets and we talked about the non-writing prophets. And I want to appreciate God that these men, probably with women, did what they did, spoke what they spoke. And so that's really they are a message for us today in as much as it was a message for them in those years. And we have talked about major and minor prophets and major prophets not because what they did what they said was more important was more important than what the what the minor prophet said but we're saying these were major prophets because of the volume of the work that they did and so it gives us a picture prophets like like isaiah prophets like jeremiah prophets like ezekiel prophets like daniel their volumes are a little bigger and following that order that I've mentioned. So they are called major prophets. And then we have also what we call minor 
prophet. And I mentioned this over and over again, not because their message was minor in such a way, but because of the volume of their work. They wrote little, but the message was cross-cutting. The message was the message of prophecy to the God's people. And so we are getting into minor prophets. And I have already mentioned what the prophecies were all about. And so we, these minor prophets that we are beginning to talk about, we begin with one who is a little bit bigger. And then they are arranged. Let me remind you about the arrangement of the Bible. The people that set it actually would begin with the bigger volumes and then they go on as they were reducing. Now, the biggest of the minor prophets, they are actually 12 in number when you count them. The very first one among the minor is Prophet Hosea. Prophet Hosea is number one. But we have a number of them. We have Hosea as number one, Joel following, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and the last one is Malachi. And so it's a pleasure that actually we read about them. And you know, sometimes when you mention a book in a church, let us open the book of Habakkuk, let us open the book of Hosea. Some people find it very difficult to find them because they are a little smaller. But now we shall take time to think through the kind of messages that they shared. But of course, the very first one that we are going to share about is Prophet Hosea. And Prophet Hosea is the man that actually we are going to begin with. And he has a message for you. He has a message for me. He was called by God like any other person. God used him like any other of the prophets, bigger and smaller. And now this is the message that we're going to think through together. Talking about God is unwavering, God is unconditional love for his people. And it is because of this love that our Lord Jesus Christ came, of course. And of course, we always read about him. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world so much so that actually he sent his son. And so that love is what I want to share about beginning and we shall continue in the next episodes, possibly talk about a little bit more concerning Hosea's life. But this message in the book of Hosea is divided into, um, his book has 14 chapters and the first three chapters, one, two, three, they are a biography of Hosea. Hosea commanded by God to do something unthinkable, to do something that actually everyone who hears it would wonder. But God was delivering a message to his people. There are circumstances, there are situations that God uses and because he wants to deliver a message, a message that is cutting, a message that is timely, he would use anything because God is God. And so here in this first three chapters, one, two, three, God speaks a message. And I just want us to get into these chapters, one, two, three. We're not going to read them in their entirety, but let's just pick chapter one to set our ground. And then we are going to think about Hosea's lifestyle. Which lifestyle can be speaking to you? Which lifestyle can speak to me? Which lifestyle can help us to think about situations that we find ourselves? And so Hosea chapter one, I just want to read a few verses there in this written word. And the Bible says, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, the king of Israel. And every time that the message comes, they will mention the leaders, the kings that were ruling at that time. And so Hosea speaks at that time. And so in verse 2, Hosea's wife and children, very, very quickly, that when the Lord, when the Lord first spoke 
through Hosea. The Lord said to Hosea, Go, take to yourself a wife of Hoadom, and have children of Hoadom. For the land commits great Hoadom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Now when we talk about Hoadom, you will discover that that is promiscuity, promiscuous life, someone, I mean, popularly now, because the terminologies that are used now is prostitution. And God telling Hosea to marry a woman of prostitution, a woman of promiscuity, and have children with her. And so when you read verses 4, 5, 6, 7, up to the end of this chapter, you'll find that actually one after another, and God is the one who gives instructions to them which names to give to these children. And we shall be looking at them as time permits. But they are very, very, very meaningful names. The very first child's name is called Jezreel. And Jezreel means bloodshed. Now, coming of trouble, that is the first, the son, that actually God tells Hosea to name the child. And those of you that have done a little bit of, you know, Bible study on the Old Testament, you have heard about Jezreel when we talk about King Ahab and his wife Jezebel, whatever happened, and the places, the place Jezreel becomes very, very prominent in that time. And so God tells Hosea, name him Jezreel, meaning bloodshed. And there was a message that was delivering to the people of Israel through the son's name, Jezreel. And the second child is a girl, and he's called No Mercy. No Mercy in verse 6. No Mercy. And in here, in Hebrew, they will call him Loruhama. Loruhama, and God withdrawing his love. No Mercy. God withdrawing his mercy. God withdrawing his care because of the people's lifestyle. And the third child is called not my people. Not my people. One of the children. Not my people. Lo Ami. And so this marriage of prophet Hosea was speaking multitudes to the people of Israel. It was a marriage. First of all, God instructing him to go and marry a prostitute. And then have children. The children of these meaningful names, a message to the people of Israel. And the woman, after all this, she runs away from Hosea and runs back into her old trade of prostitution. Just imagine a man who fears the Lord, a man who speaks on behalf of God, a man who is a link between God and his people, this kind of marriage, this kind of marriage. And then God tells him, even when she has left, go, go and get her back. And this is in chapter three. She left and then the Lord spoke to him, go again. Love a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress, even as the Lord loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins. So I brought her for 15. God bought her back. Now, the same message is, this is, we are reading about. Friends, when you read this Hosea message, it speaks multitudes. It speaks about the hardest bit of the marriage. Talking about promiscuity, talking about unfaithfulness, talking about betrayal. This is what it is. It's the hardest marriage story that God is taking Hosea into. So most marriages, as we know them, begin well, begin blissfully begin with love or begin with care begin you can imagine those of us who are married you can begin you can imagine how you has begun 
the time that you had, the moments that you had when you're courting, when you are dating. And now, but most times, crushing comes along the way, which are moments of uh, misery later. But now for Hosea, it is right from the very beginning. Go and, be, and marry a woman of whoredom, prostitution. Go to the street, pick one. And because actually it was a message, the message is full. So for Hosea, it was a different story. God telling God marry the prostitute, as we have read. And it was already a disaster for him. But there was a message in the, from this bitter paradox. It was a message from this bitter beginning of Hosea, which we are going to think through immediately, you and I, because we are in seeking and finding God. And so actually what is God saying to us through the message of Hosea? And Hosea delivers greatly for us. So God was using this kind of parable to catch the attention of the people of Israel because of their unfaithfulness that actually many times even us we proclaim God our father we proclaim save we proc but many times we stray but what happens what does God do when someone is astray when you and I deviate and we become deviant so God was pointing to the covenant relationship gone bad. God had called these people. They are his children. And the covenant relationship was spousal, like you have, it was like a marriage relationship. God and his people entered a covenant. But the covenant was meant to stay on they sticking to the worship of their God. But eventually they broke and started worshiping other gods. And this is what they called idolatry. And idolatry had eaten them to the marrow that they were doing anything anyway. And during his, this time, as we shall maybe see a little later, people were doing well off because life was a little easier. God pointed for them a pic, painted for them a picture that actually they needed to think through. And not only them, but you and I, in the life of Hosea, just sit and imagine, meditate, contemplate. Because actually, are, it's not a long book, by the way. They're just 14 chapters, one, two, three. And some of them are very short, like chapter three is very short, five verses or so. Now read through and bring to mind what did God really mean? What did he want this man to do? And... This chapters one, two, three, the marriage that actually this man dives into. And when we talk about marriage, of course, it's a very, very common phenomenon in our lives. When a young man grows up and is of age, marries. When a young woman grows up and is of age, marries. And all of us actually look forward to having marriage and bearing children. Indeed, Hosea married, but it was, it was uncommon circumstances that actually he was he was he went into it i saw the marriage between hosea was was, was between hosea and gomer the woman and god uses it as a parable to teach something there and it talks about god's relentless love relentless means it never ends enduring love all through now whom does he love he loves his people despite the instructions given earlier and despite the instructions that have been broken, God tells, do not worship any other God but me. They go and worship. Do not make for yourselves images of anything. They go and make them. Do not make. And so it was that kind of life. And when you sit and think, do you think we are any different in our lifestyles? Do you think we are any different from what, is, what was happening between Jose and his wife? And so, but in chapter 3, when God tells Hosea that even when she has gone away, go after her, it shows love, love triumphant. Love triumphs over. Because this is God's love that is undivided. God's love that is straight, focused, and 
God focuses on you. God focuses on me. Even when we stray, like Hosea's wife strayed, but the love searched out. The love goes looking. And so this is what God desires of his people. Now, God, from this, we discover that actually Hosea suffered a little bit. Not just a little bit, but suffered. Because you have little children and your wife leaves you. Which is actually common. You'll find people struggling with children. Little children, the wife leaves you. Or little children, there are men also who leave the houses and leave their wives there. Now, God suffers exceedingly with us. Just like Hosea suffered exceedingly with his wife, Gomer. Now, God is loving. His love never ceases. His love never ends. No matter what. It is what actually what I picked. No matter what. God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. God forgives. And when he forgives, he forgives completely. The reason why he tells Hosea, go and look after her and, and get her back. So this love that leads to reconciliation. And I just want to mention this. The love in a marriage that leads to reconciliation. What are you going through? What could it be that is not leading to reconciliation? The love that leads to reconciliation. And I know that as I speak these things, as we talk about these things in the Bible, there are many questions that arise in our minds, especially the marriages that could be at the rock, especially the marriages that are not going well. There are questions, but we need to dive a little bit deeper and never give up. Because God himself never gives up on a sinner. He never gives up on the people whom he cares for. And now, there you are, there I am. What lesson, what must I learn from this kind of relationship that God is in it? And, and so we need to have a listening ear to what God says. So Hosea leaves us an example in our family, in our relationships with our partners. There is also an issue of redemption. Redemption means you go and bring back. Goma made many mistakes, but still Hosea went to, to look for her. Now, here is the issue that I'm ending with before we shall be thinking of another episode in this book of Hosea. Now, this, this is the issue. Giving another chance. Never too late to make, never, it's never too late to mend, to make ways back. How do you respond when you find that somebody is letting you down? And this one is the question that I want to leave with you. How do you respond when you feel somebody is letting you down? And of course, actually, we have heard stories. We have heard testimonies. When someone gives up, he gives up completely. When someone gives up, she gives up completely. That's the issue. So the choice on how you respond is yours. But Hosea chose to be understanding and forgiving. And possibly, it's all here. He chose to be understanding and forgiving. What are you? And maybe let me leave it with you at that. What are you? Are you in a relationship? Are you in a marriage? At what level is it? Is it, has it gone so far like Hosea's? But of course our generation has become, I don't know which level we are, gone is gone. No surrender, no retreat. But what God desires is he never gives up on a sinner. So look beyond people's mistakes, this is, it could be a major thing, it could be a minor thing, but the thing is, in our relationships, let's, let's cut it down. In our relationships, no more life relationships. People's mistakes are so much. I have mistakes, another person has mistakes now, but we need to offer support. We need to offer love and support. And I think this is the message of offering love and support. When your junior or when your colleague does something, maybe commits a mistake, do you hold on to it? There are some people who are perennial, you know, 
they never forget. They never forgive. But they hold, they hold tight. But Hosea shows us that actually we need to look beyond people's mistakes, offer love and support. In marriage, look at it. How about those families? And so friends, it's about being patient and kind. It's about hope and starting over again. Hosea did. If you are finding life a little difficult in your marriage, now it takes two to tango. It shouldn't just be on one side. When Hosea talked to Gomer, she accepted, she listened, and that is, that is what led to the return. What happens with you? What happens in our relationships gone bad? Some people will only want to see one person running and following, but it takes both of them. It takes both of you to hold it together. And so Gomer's return to Hosea shows that there can be a change and we plead with the families to change. We plead with the wives to transform themselves. We plead with the husbands to transform themselves. And God requires transformation. God requires mending. And so that our life relationships can continue moving. And so Hosea leaves us with a great lesson. And we are going to have another episode on this same thing. So actually we, we think deeper. And may God bless you and watch over you as you think through this Hosea story, please read it. But God requires that you and I return and make, because he offers another chance. God offers another chance to you and to me so that actually we live a life that's pleasing to him in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we say, Amen.